Anurid Chan, the Head of Solutions Engineering for Asia Pacific and Japan with Fortra. Thanks for joining us on our Tech and Sec Weekly. Thanks for having me, Chris. Uh, look, lovely. And we've been working with Fortra. So uh, there's a bit of a story here. Uh, some uh, might find this brand relatively new, but there's a bit of pedigree behind Fortra. Uh, you're there in Melbourne as well. Um, let's start with Fortra. I think people need to understand what Fortra is. There's a big offering here. Maybe introduce us to Fortra. Yeah, look, absolutely. Uh, many people don't know Fortra because it's it's a brand uh, that has been renamed just in the past six months. So Fortra, Fortra was previously help systems. And we have a really deep and old pedigree in the IBM I space where we've been providing solutions around automation, workflow, and even security for IBM I systems since yeah. 19, 1982, to be honest. And over the past four to five years, we realized with a lot of feedback from our customers that there's still a lot that needs to be done specifically around cybersecurity. And that's been the ask for our customers for quite some time. And uh, we sort of delved into that space. And uh, it, it was basically we decided to rebrand ourselves as Fortra simply because we now relate to a lot more than just IBM systems and IBM solutions. It's something that health systems is synonymous with. And we wanted to expand that with a completely fresh look, completely new brand. And here we are with Fortra. I, and I think it tells the story of where cybersecurity has come. Given the, the range of sort of products and services that you provide, it's extensive. Uh, do you find that that's been a trend in the market over the last few years where, you know, there's been too many vendors, actually. Most, most clients and customers want to, to shrink the number of the vendors that they work with. And then you get the likes of Fortra that... Uh, have merged and, and sort of bring those products together and eventually it needs a sort of a new message uh, to come through for, for potentially clients but also current customers to say look we, we can have a lot more offering here and we're doing a lot more than what you might have known that we were doing 20 years ago is that where you think the company's gone and, and is uh well certainly achieved i think you need to uh, hit the nail on the head chris i mean if you think about uh, what we've seen actually in the market as main market problems, we've actually narrowed it down to three. Of course, there are many, but for us, you know, the more glaring ones are actually three. The first one is the growth of vulnerabilities and attacks for the past so many years. You know, it's uh, it's no secret that uh, these things are rising exponentially and getting smarter day by day. So much so that I think in 2022 we had uh, in excess of 20,000 different types of vulnerabilities uh, posted. Uh, then the other issue that we've had is the expanded cost of cybersecurity. It's projected, I believe, in 2023 for cybersecurity spending to hit somewhere close to $176 billion globally, right? And that's a lot of money being spent on cybersecurity and cybersecurity solutions. And then the final thing that we've been seeing is actually scarce resource resources available and these two uh, you know this issue is actually inversely proportional to the other problems that i spoke about where you're looking at vulnerabilities increasing day in and day out spending on cybersecurity going through the roof but people that can actually address these you know skilled labor resources is something that's very hard for us to get uh, you know labor market that's very very difficult to cover so much so as an example i've got a couple of headcounts in cybersecurity since the past one year, and I've been struggling to fill that gap, right? So you think about 3 million cybersecurity uh, resources or cybersecurity experts that are needed in the market today, that problem is just gonna expand, it's not gonna shrink in the future. So we, we thought you have to actually look at this from a completely different angle. You have to look at this problem from a different perspective, and that's where Fortra comes into play, right? We want to have, uh, we understand the problems, the cybersecurity problems in the marketplace, and we want to to basically consolidate those problems into the solutions that we can address the market with. And we also understand that it's it, no organization will have complete coverage of the cybersecurity requirements, and that's where the resource part comes into play. So how can we offer services to our customers uh, as part of the solution instead of just throwing products in, products out there. 
Well, it comes back to your role as well as solutions engineering. Uh, I think that IBM I solutions uh, work that, that uh, the company has been involved with. Do you see that as a good basis for what you're doing, particularly around automation? We hear a lot in the market that they're trying to automate. You mentioned the skills. So hence, uh, putting less pressure on the teams and trying to automate as poss- as much as you can. We find that that's a, another key trend that you're seeing in the market, but that's easier said than done than to just to automate. There's no doubt in my mind, automation is going to play a massive role in cybersecurity in the future. Like, uh, you know, if you think about how threats work, how attackers uh, perform what they do, a lot of it is actually automation. Yeah. You, know, you don't actually have one person sitting behind the screen uh, specifically targeting an organization, right? You've got script kiddies that are run in autopilot. You've got attacks that are simulated automatically across the network against so many different organizations. And it's basically, uh, you know, contrary to popular belief, but it's, it's those organizations that do not have their defenses up and running and are not strong are the, the lowest hanging fruit for these attackers, right? But all that comes through automation. And so for us to actually counter attack or counter prevent those attacks from happening, you have to use a degree of automation amongst the solutions that you have. So definitely no doubt in my mind that's going to play hard. And the other one is the sort of the mix between business applications and then workflow applications and the cloud environments that they often sort of not dictate but require. Often they, I, I do see that there's different cloud platforms used based on what what their purpose is or what the applications are doing. Do you think cloud management is also another sort of aspect there that uh, you provide those solutions for? It is, but it's not the beyond and end all, right? 80% of organizations still have some footprint on-prem, right? So yeah. yes, there is this uh, this shift for, for moving from on-prem to cloud, but I would say by and large, it's actually a hybrid environment that we're talking about. And hybrid environments have their own challenges. So it's, it's not good enough for a vendor to actually have a cloud only approach to cybersecurity. It has to be a hybrid approach where you can satisfy the requirements of customers that have some on-prem footage as well as some cloud-based, right? And they might be in that process of actually migrating to the cloud. And so what happens to security in the interim? You can't just let it go and say, okay, we'd only worry about it when it comes into the cloud. So we have to look at both aspects. How do you go about onboarding a new customer? Uh, you know, the reasonable, you know, thousand thousand packs uh, company. How how do you go about it? Is it because uh, often do they understand what their environment is like? Uh, often it's the discovery process for them as well. What's your general process? And I know it's a very general question, but uh, given the the scope, uh, I suppose, of what Fortra can provide. Where do you potentially start or do you start with a service and phase it in? It is a bit of a general uh, question, Chris. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there are so many answers to this, right? If, if I were to choose the onboarding process, I, I guess I would go back to the four trust strengths, right? So we, we basically are built on three, uh, three notions, three pillars. Essentially, we are looking at being a problem solver, not customer. Uh, we, are, we also want to be a proactive partner or protector and a relentless ally, right? So these are the three things that we want to we want to uh, offer to our customers. So when it comes to you know onboarding a new customer, obviously the biggest challenge or the first thing that we look at is what is it that is preventing a customer to uh, go up. Across, uh, in, in the maturity across the cybersecurity, right? What is it that is holding them back? It could be a myriad of things. It could be resources. It could be uh, the lack of visibility of what they already have. It could be things like uh, not really having the right guidance to do what it is that they have to do. And by and large, right, if you look at the values that I spoke about previously, you know, we want to be able to have that partnership with our customer to be a problem solver and then to be able to proactively protect them from the threats that they come face to face with. And throughout this journey, be a relentless ally. And by that, I mean, for instance, that if they come across a new challenge, we should be able to be there with them and be be their ally and help them with that challenge. Uh, So I know it's not 
the direct answer you might be looking at. But no, no, you, I, I think you've answered it well because my next follow up would be: Do you find customers do struggle in certain areas that's relatively consistent, or within whether it's a particular market vertical that you find patterns? But yeah, do you find there's any aspects that customers do struggle with in particular? Uh, Customers struggle with a lot of things in cybersecurity, to be honest with you, right? But what the messaging that we want to give customers is to simplify their approach to cybersecurity. Now, this is easier said than done, but for instance, we follow this uh, this mantra at Fortra where we say, why don't you look at the fundamental controls first before moving on to foundational advanced controls, right? And what that means is create a bedrock of security and then build upon that as your security maturity increases over time, as your security maturity and budget increases over time, right? So have the basics, for instance, like uh, vulnerability management, right? To be able to understand, you know, where your systems are in terms of asset discovery and maintenance, right? To be able to understand if what things are changing in your environment from, from an integrity monitoring perspective, and then build up on that as your maturity grows over time your cyber hygiene grows over time one other thing that you offer in managed security services particularly on data loss prevention uh, and uh, the mdr ma uh, managed detection and response uh, do you find the mdr uh, again is a key service that that customers need because again they might not have the resources to to manage that that aspect yeah look uh, it comes to uh, the initial point i spoke about at the intro where you know you're getting a lot of vulnerabilities, a lot of attacks, but you don't have enough resources to manage those vulnerabilities, those attacks, as well as the plethora of tools that you may be owning, right? So this is where a managed service service of some kind comes into play. So if you need a detection or a response capabilities, but you do not have the resources to do that, that's where Fortra fits in, right? If you think about data protection, it's a complete journey of an artifact, of a data artifact, all the way from you know, uh, uh, the, the time the data was created, that data artifact was created, you've got to now classify it, you've got to know where that data sits. You will need to understand now who's got access to that data entity within your organization and what happens to that data entity when it leaves the organization, right? Who's got rights to open it, forward it in an email, you know, share it with some third party. Uh, if, if it's a confidential piece of data, how do you handle it? Right, so so data classification, digital rights, uh, data loss prevention, and digital rights management, they form basis of data protection, and we want to provide that as a service, so that the customers don't have to actually worry about tooling and products, but they can just get it along, get ahead, and just carry on the work that they need to do, bearing in mind that the security is something that's been taken care of in Portugal. The other one is with your role is APJ, you've got a regional uh, responsibility. How do you find uh, the region is going? Uh, maybe the differentiator in the region, Singapore, Australia versus sort of the other developing nations and the like. Uh, how do you think it's uh, faring at the moment? You're asking me really tricky questions, Chris, right? <laughs> Each other over here. But look, uh, I would say that there's tremendous maturity uh, in cybersecurity in, in this region, right? Uh, this is, you know, this is probably not something that a lot of other regions think about uh, when they think about Asia Pacific and Japan. But uh, if you think about the strides that Singapore's taken in cybersecurity, right, with mass standards, et cetera, uh, what New Zealand is doing uh, as part of the state of protection the security, right? In, in India, for instance, you've got the RBI guidelines that dictate what any financial services should be doing with regards to data security and cybersecurity in general. They've come a long way, right? Even countries that are that might have smaller economies are extremely serious about cybersecurity. Countries like Thailand, Vietnam, right? They they are uh, they're not what you would assume them to be. They're actually far more advanced in cybersecurity than we ever thought. Countries like New Zealand, for instance, are really putting their weight when it comes to cybersecurity and data protection. You know, especially. Uh, their direction where they want to make sure that they're completely independent from a financial institution's perspective with mainland Australia, right? They don't want any dependencies with the bank partnerships that they have 
with mainland Australia, and they want to make sure that their integrity and compliance is separate and managed within the country. So yes, absolutely, security is much a lot more mature than what it used to be. We've got a challenge there because it's a very active region. But look, it's uh, definitely one to have a look at. Fortra, and you're not new to the region either. I think you've got to keep coming back to the pedigree that Fortra has uh, behind it and the exposure. All I can recommend for the audience is have a look at fortra.com. Uh, we've also got a hub on the marketplace for Fortra with a number of white papers and the like. And I think that's one of the key challenges uh, that you might well have at Fortra is the, getting that message across that you can pretty much uh, provide any solution and a full product suite. It's pretty an impressive product suite that you offer. And I think if you've got a challenge, uh, Anna, it's uh, the fact that you've got so much to offer and, and trying to simplify it. But I think one of the key takeaways out of this particular session is keeping it simple and starting it, uh, starting that journey, I suppose, for that maturity model. Um, but Anarud Chan, the Head of Solutions Engineering for APJ with Fortra, thank you very much for joining us today on our Tech and Sec Weekly. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Chris.